Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a hot take uh, on what else? Race. Because we apparently can't talk about anything about without talking about race constantly now. So annoying that I found this many news articles related to race or race adjacent issues, I'll say. Uh, it's just annoying. Oh, these people won't stop talking about it. Brown University, overwhelmingly vote in favor of reparations for black students. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Brown University could do what it wants, I guess. And I'm sure they have millions and millions of dollars. Give them money. Give them money. Or do what Tucker Carlson suggested, which was to go to Nigeria or someplace in Africa uh, that's very poor. Bring 30,000 people over and give them free room and board. Give them, you know, free college for four years and kick out all the students that are currently in. Surely they are more deserving of the reparations. I mean, if you make 30K or more a year, you're in the 1% of the world in terms of economy. Most people in Nigeria and places in Africa are not in that 1%. It's only fair. It's only fair. Um, but sure, you know, we'll just nod our heads and go, okay. <laughs> Ivy League students who feel guilty or want to look woke and you could be, you could graduate and say, oh, you know, in 2021, we gave reparations to the black students, and we were so woke. I don't know how many people are black at Brown University. I assume, I think, isn't Brown University one of the black colleges? I don't remember. But uh, what what are you going to do? Like... Both resolutions seek to identify any black students who are direct descendants of slaves or who were, quote, entangled with or affiliated, afflicted by the university and Brown family and their associates in reference to the university's founder, Nicholas Brown Jr. This is just not going to go well. Okay. So what if they find that Nicholas Brown Jr., had some anti-Semitic views. Are you then going to give reparations to the Jewish students? What about students who uh, have ancestors? You know, they take a DNA test and they have ancestors who are slaves. They weren't slaves in America. Are you going to give them reparations? Again, what about students of uh, Jewish descent or Israeli descent, I guess it would be, I guess it would be Jewish descent, uh, you know, because they were slaves during the Egyptian period. What, what about people who were slaves during the Roman era descended from those slaves? That's everybody, you morons. Oh, but it's black reparations. Okay. And will this shut you up? Will this shut you up about race? I don't think so. I don't think this is going to do anything other than get these woke morons to complain even more. See, it won't be enough. And they'll have all sorts of reasons why. <laughs> they'll have all sorts of reasons why it's not enough money. It's really not equity. We really don't feel equal. It don't feel like racism is gone. It won't be enough. This isn't the end game. This is just a step on the road. They will not stop at this as long as you continue to indulge these woke morons. But, hey, it's it's their own university. They want to give away money. I, I would take it. If I was a student there, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll take the money. Why wouldn't I? Some students probably won't. Some students will probably be insulted by the uh, by the mere offer. And I wouldn't blame them for being insulted either. Uh, it's just dumb. The whole thing is dumb. This is a push by woke morons who think they're doing something good.
you know, in 10 years looking back on this era. Oh my God. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. This will be the sort of thing, you know, they're digging up now like racist past of some of these universities or whatever. This will be the thing that they dig up 10, 20 years from now, right? 10, 20 years from now, they'll be like, oh, didn't you guys give out reparations? Oh, yeah, we did. We didn't mean to. We were caught up. But they'll have all sorts of excuses why they were stupid. Maybe it's April Fool's Day. This is an April 1st article. Maybe it's all Maybe it's all April Fool's. Maybe they'll come out today and say, April Fool's. I doubt it. For better or worse, Joe and Jill Biden united in the use of bad Spanish. Before Joe Biden was sworn in as president, he came under scrutiny for using a bit of Spanglish during a meeting with Schumer and Pelosi. Yeah, I mean, it's pandering. That's what it is. Joe Biden has been in office for 47 years. I've seen him on TV for decades. I don't think I've ever seen him once use Spanish in all that time. Maybe like one time he was at some sort of Latino event and he said he said some phrase that they, you know, got ready beforehand. But, I mean, this is just, and, and that too, is it's just pandering. It's just absolutely pandering. You know, you could tell when like, one of these politicians, like he went behind the scenes. Oh, uh, let me practice this. Uh, let me practice it. Me amo as Joe Biden. Me amo as Joe Biden. Is, am I saying it right? Me amo as Joe Biden. <laughs> I mean, it's pathetic. It's pathetic and it's pandering. Uh, and it's also this weird thing that the Democrats have is they assume everybody who's in this country from a foreign country, everybody who's an immigrant, oh, they're going to vote Democrat. You're going to vote Democrat, right? You have to. The Democrats love the immigrants. Except that they don't. They constantly screw them over. But uh, my favorite one is when he, he bobbed his head to the Spanish music and, and claimed to like it. I mean, how sad. How sad is that? I think you really have to have your head examined if you voted for this guy based on that. My God. AOC claims surge played into white supremacist philosophy, but Biden and Obama have used the word in border debates. Obama previously discussed the surge of unaccompanied children in July of 2014. Do I have this one here? No, there's another article. I think I forgot to pull it up. Um, in Chicago, they're trying to name a school after Barack Obama, but a bunch of woke cards have decided that he's an oppressor and therefore they can't. They can't use his name. That's how woke they are in Chicago. Um, and AOC doesn't care. I mean, AOC, you know, there's a more perfect use of the term demagogue. I don't, I don't know. She, she will literally say anything, I think, to further her agenda, get herself in the news. Um, but, you know, Fox... It gets sucked down that rabbit hole like that. They are they are happy to quote her all day long because she'll say these outrageous things, and thus the cycle of idiocy continues. Um, but you know, surge, <laughs> the surge of unaccompanied children. I mean, there's no mystery. Joe Biden invited people here. People in poor countries said, "Ooh, this is my chance to get my kid across the border." And things are so bad in those countries. Those those parents figure, well, better my kid take a shot at getting across the border than stay here. That's how bad it is in some of those countries. That's how bad the cartels are. You know, they make life miserable. Better my kid take the chance of becoming killed or worse uh, trying to get across the border at least he'll be in America where it's relatively safe and he'll he'll have a chance at a life. But, you know, it's also true, too, that some of these parents are probably just selling their kids off to the cartels or, you know, their kids are kidnapped by the cartels because they need them to get people across the border. And here's, here's AOC. Anyone using the term surge around you consciously is trying to invoke a militaristic frame. Doesn't make any sense. 
militaristic frame makes no sense. That that doesn't mean anything. Those two words together mean nothing. <laughs> this is not a surge. These children's these are children and they are not insurgents. No one said they were, you moron. No one said yet they were. But you'll notice she never talks about the coyotes who use these children to get illegal immigrants across the wire and other things, I'm sure. I'm sure they're smuggling things. I'm sure they're doing all kinds of stuff. But she doesn't care about that. She doesn't care. All she cares about is that she can look good, look woke. I mean, this is the ultimate in virtue signaling. A politician who looks woke but does nothing for the actual people she supposedly helps. And it's disgusting that the media props her up and makes her look that way. That they will put her on MSNBC and these other channels and say, oh, there's AOC, she's doing such wonderful work. Not that I have a specific example right this second, but it's just the impression that they give. Of all Democrats, really, but especially her. Lieutenant Governor in Michigan, Garland Gilchrist, claims Republicans don't want black people to vote. You know, <laughs> I it amazes me Democrats say stuff like this with the incredibly racist history of the Democratic Party, which they never call out. You know, if you're going to call out reparations, how are you not going to call out the Democratic Party for their racism after slavery? Incredible amounts of it. Not as bad as slavery, but pretty pretty far up there. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist told a predominantly black church on Sunday, what is he doing in a church talking about politics? That Republicans are pushing election integrity forms because they really don't want black people to vote. No. I mean, look, if you paid attention to any of the Trump stuff, uh, Trump has gotten a huge amount of black voters and uh, Latino voters. And in fact, as I've said in previous videos, my theory is eventually the Democrats will realize that they're just letting in Republicans. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, wait, we got to close the border. <laughs> That's going to happen. At some point, there's going to be a poll and they're going to realize, oh, crap, these people are voting for Republicans. That's going to happen. Because immigrants aren't stupid they'll understand the writing on the wall eventually. You know, some of them come here, they don't know what's going on, they don't follow the news, but they'll figure it out because word just gets around. People just talk to each other. They go, oh man, I'm going to vote. Can't wait to vote to, for the Democrats. Like, whoa, dude, you're voting for the Democrats? Yeah, why? No, 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 man. Not anymore. Really? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Trump brought the jobs. He did? Yeah. But didn't he close the border? Yeah, he did, but the people who were here did a lot better. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. And thus, the word spreads. People talk. <laughs> Democrats haven't figured out how to stop people from doing that yet. Uh, white professor lodges racial discrimination suit over pay differences with black professors. Suit notes that each the black engineering professors' salaries are tens of thousands of dollars more than the white chemistry teacher's professor salary. Uh, there you go. Oh, it's Camden County College. That's right near me. A white Camden County College chemistry professor say he's earning less than black engineering professors at the same institution and has lodged a racial discrimination in federal court. Wow. Didn't realize it was so close to home. Look at that. Well, Chapman's salary for 2020 was $137,000. Holy crap. These guys make a lot of money. While Robert's salary for 2021 was $142,000. Uh, the guy who's suing says his salary is only $91,000. Yeah, that doesn't seem very fair. My God, that's like $40,000 of difference. Ooh, this could really backfire. <laughs> there you go, Camden County. That's what you get for being woke, I guess. See, the pendulum swings. 
Right now it's swinging way towards the low. It's going to swing back because discrimination is wrong. No matter how you look at it, you discriminate on somebody based on the color of their skin. It's wrong. It doesn't matter the color. It doesn't matter how you did it. It's wrong. The woke idiots are slowly getting up to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, except for the hardcore radicalized ones that just don't seem to care. And here's a poll. Majority of voters blame mass shooting on mental illness, gang violence. And just a quarter uh, blame access to guns. And why do I bring this up? It's because the recent shootings, uh, Twitter jumps on them as, oh my God, another angry white person. And they keep trying to blame white shooters. And then it comes out, oh, the shooter's not white. And then the news whoosh, drops off the face of the earth. It doesn't feed the narrative. Therefore, it's got to go. This is the journalist deciding, okay, here's the narrative. White people are angry and they get mad and they shoot a bunch of people. So find stories like that. And then they find the first one that they think is that way, start reporting it, and then they realize, oh, wait, the guy's not white. It doesn't fit our narrative. Ooh, stop reporting that. But most people understand what it is. It's mental illness. It's gang violence. It's crime. Uh, you know, depending on the kind of shooting it is. <clears throat> You know, the guy at the spa, obviously that was a mental illness. It wasn't a gang. He he was mental. You have to be mental to go to a spa and start shooting people and claim it was sex addiction. I, I think that's mental illness. No matter how you slice it. Even if he's right, it's a mental illness. He's saying that he's a sex addict. But I think there's more to it than that. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh, same thing with some of these other shootings. Uh, you know, To go into a building of defenseless people and just start shooting, I mean, that's mental. It's mental. Uh, gang violence is drug deal goes bad or you know, someone shows up to get revenge for a drug deal going bad or whatever. Somebody gets robbed. Happens every day in Chicago. Continuing. Streaming service Hulu to release series based on 1619 Project. Oh boy, this will help. Uh, <laughs> wow. If anything would make me never, ever want to subscribe to Hulu now, it would be this. This is a, as they describe in the American Greatness article here, a far left narrative that falsely claims the United States was built on racism. And slavery. They call it a slaveocracy. And that really, in the United States, the Revolutionary War wasn't fought for independence, according to the 1619 Project. It was fought to keep the slave trade going. Uh, this has been widely debunked, but, you know, like a lot of conspiracy theories, they're very popular. And this is a blue and non conspiracy theory. It really is. Um, there's a lot of people who just want to believe that everybody's against them, and they're called paranoid people. And back in the 70s and 80s, we just ignored them. They didn't have a platform. You know, they would write to uh, wacky newsletters that nobody ever read, or maybe they'd get a letter in the newspaper once in a while, but that was it. Now with the internet, they're everywhere because it's all about clicks, and crazy gets clicks. 1619 Project is the craziest thing ever. It sells. That's it. You'd have to be a total woke tart to believe it, but there you go. Congratulations, Hulu. You're spreading misinformation. Uh, Pisaki admits Biden's infrastructure bill is not about infrastructure. <laughs> well, duh. I talked about an article yesterday that part of it's about racist highways that they're going to tear down. Racist highways. Oh no, the highway's racist. I'm being oppressed. <laughs> I'm making so such great time, but I'm being oppressed. I uh, this normally I wouldn't care about this, except it's just gonna waste millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's just gonna waste it. But part of the problem is these people believe that that's okay. If you look at like a guy like Paul Krugman as an economist, he believes in the broken window theory 
I think it's called that, where you just pay people to do stuff. You break windows so people have jobs to fix windows. Or you dig ditches and hire people to dig them and hire other people to fill them up just to give them work. That doesn't work. That doesn't generate anything. It doesn't move the economy because it's taken out of taxes. And it does nothing. It, it's similar to what happens in wartime because you put, you put wealth into weapons and there the wealth sits. Now you can shoot the weapons off, but that just destroys more wealth and it destroys the wealth you put into the weapon. So, and then you need more wealth to maintain the weapons, to guard them. It's a, it's a black hole for money. It doesn't do anything. This is the same thing. And they admit only 5% of the spending package goes towards roads and bridges. 5%. So that tells you that our roads aren't either either aren't that bad, number one. Number two, it doesn't cost that much to actually fix them. Or number three, these people are incredibly negligent. What this is, is the new Green Deal disguised as something. They were determined to get this new Green Deal any way they can. Because they are that much committed to climate change nonsense. And I call it nonsense, not because it's not a factor, but their solutions aren't good because their solutions are going to ruin this country while not doing anything about China and India, the two biggest polluters. They're the two biggest polluters. One thing they could do is stop needlessly polluting with our military. Uh, out of everything that pollutes in the United States or in the world, the U.S. military is one of the biggest things in that the United States have, has control of. And that could stop tomorrow. Biden could bring the troops home, close down those military bases around the world, save us billions of dollars, and stop the pollution. They could stop the burn pits. They could stop the trash. They could stop the carbon footprint. They could stop the depleted uranium. They could stop the wasted money in packaging, uniforms, weapons, explosives, guns, ammo, and everything that goes along. See, it's not just the soldiers. It's not just the guns. It's everything that goes along to keep them maintained so they're ready. Not to mention the millions and millions upon that we spend on bribes just on a local populace just maintaining the damn military bases. It's a nightmare. It's billions of dollars. Trump was trying to dismantle it. And they fought him every step of the way. And you see what happened. And I'm not saying Trump was altruistic for dismantling it. He just is a pragmatic businessman. He saw that overhead. It's not generating any money for anyone except the people who's lining their pockets and work in Washington. That's the only people it's benefiting. It's not benefiting the locals. It's hurting them. It's hurting the Afghan people. It's hurting the people in Okinawa. That's been an ongoing thing. I, I've, I've covered that in my comics and uh, I've pointed to articles. I've talked about it. The people of Okinawa, and this goes all the way back to World War II, want the U.S. military base. They're gone. They've overturned their own government multiple times over the issue. They still can't get rid of us. It's because the U.S. government will do anything to keep that base there. Because they need it as a launching point for other bases. They need it as training. I mean, it's a, I believe it's a Marine base. They don't want to get rid of it. They want... To be ready for a war with North Korea, or a war with China, or a war with Russia. It's a empire of military bases. That's what we have. Um, but you won't see any of that. I mean, you could cut all those military bases and you could fund this idiotic thing. You wouldn't have to raise taxes. But they'll never do that. They need both. See, they're lining their pockets from the military stuff 
and this. See how it works? That's why we pay so much in taxes. And finally, notorious anti-Trump doctor claims black on Asian crime occurs because of white supremacy. This is how mental I think people are. Prominent anti-Trump doctor Eugene Gu, Gu, Ju, Gu, probably Gu, claims that black on Asian crimes only occur because of white supremacy in America. Okay, so listen to this logic. Black on Asian crimes, and he's Asian himself. I don't know if you can see the picture. Black on Asian crimes only occur because of our system of white supremacy that strips African Americans of their economic opportunities while taking respect and dignity away from Asian Americans. Also, white people in power are experts at dividing and conquering to stay in power. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And how dare you speak for African Americans? I mean... And this is a doctor. This is a guy who supposedly is beholden to science. This is how cancerous woke ideology is. A doctor, his, in my view, his brain is rotten now. Because it's been infused with this nonsense. Oh, I stubbed my toe. It's white supremacy. It's just unbelievable. Um... I can't believe I need to say this, but no, it's not white people's fault if a black person chooses to assault an Asian person, added YouTube pundit Laura Chen. <laughs> yeah, it's just not. Yeah, and here's here's another good comment uh, from Zaid Giuliani. You realize you're arguing everyone is just a puppet of white people with no agency of their own is basically a white supremacist theory, right? <laughs> I mean, this is where we are. Um, and look at him. What What is he doing? Would you go to this doctor? I wouldn't. I would not go to him. <laughs> I would not go to a doctor who kneels and goes on and on about white supremacy and Trump. No, thank you. Where the heck does he... He's a... General Surgical Residency Program at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Uh, it's just weird. It's just weird that a doctor... you Because you think doctors are so smart. But that's the insidious thing about woke ideology. It really can infect some of the most... Well, I'll say the dumbest smart people. It's it's. There's another factor here. So, like... In Dungeons and Dragons, there was always these traits you had for your character. Strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma, um, and uh, comeliness, if you use the seventh one. But um, if you, you, could be, you could have a high intelligence and a low wisdom, which meant you were educated, but you made poor choices. And the opposite could also be true. If you had a high wisdom and a low intelligence, you weren't very educated, but you had a good sense of what right and wrong. You had a you you made wise decisions based on what you knew. This to me is a is a an example of a guy who has a high intelligence and a low wisdom. You know? And that that's a lot of people, unfortunately. And unfortunately there's a tendency, I think, in the Democratic Party to worship intelligence or what they perceive as intelligence. And anybody with a big degree. Uh, is considered intelligent. But you meet enough people, you live long enough, you realize not everybody with a big degree is intelligent in the same way. They just, they're not wise. You know? They, they're, they're good at a select group of things mentally, but in the bigger picture, they're, they're idiots. They're just idiots. And uh, I don't know what the, why that is. I wish I could figure that out. I want to say it's something inherent in them. Some kind of weakness brought up in them. Maybe, maybe it's a, a lack of validation in their life through their family or whatever. And they, they're just desperate for some sort of validation outside their work. 
but I don't know. I don't know. You know, a lot of people considered me one of those people, you know, super smart, but uh, made poor decisions. And to some extent, I deserve that criticism, I guess. And maybe it's just that people can only be smart in a limited amount of things. Um, but it's just, I mean, this is just dumb. <laughs> it's just dumb. You know, black on Asian crime is a real thing. Uh, and it needs to be addressed. And the more it's not addressed, the more it's covered up by the media and people like this making excuses for it, it's just going to get worse. I mean, what's going to happen if he gets beaten up? I mean, there was, there was a, a, in the UK, a similar mindset when it came to the refugees, right? No matter what the refugees did, there would be these woke white idiots who would defend them. Even, you know, and there were plenty of refugees. They're good people. They're wonderful people. But there were some who were criminal. So there was an example of this woman who she went to, you know, she was totally woke and loved the refugees and went to the refugees to help them. And then she got raped. And then she turned around and forgave her rapist because I, I, I never really understood the, the logic behind it. But she, she basically forgave him and, you know, said, blamed herself partially <laughs> you know there was a case where they were uh, uh deporting a uh, uh, uh an immigrant who had committed a bunch of crimes including sexual assault and the woke idiots got the plane to stop and turn around and kept them in the country so it's like they want to hurt themselves they feel so guilty they've been trained to feel so guilty about themselves and what their ancestors may or may not have done, that they're willing to do that. Does maybe that's it? Maybe Eugene you, Jew Goo, not sure. G U. Uh, he feels so guilty about his success that he feels he needs to do this to punish himself. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I'm so sick of talking about race. <laughs> 